Monday in Tryon, North Carolina. And uh, it just struck me over the last couple of days in particular as I've had a chance to lead several studies and a couple of churches that uh, we need to get back to sharing our faith. We need to get back to witnessing to others. I think we're so afraid of being politically incorrect that we've withdrawn from the outward witnessing. Now, I don't mean hit people over the head with Bibles and knock on their door and say you're going to die and go to hell if you don't accept Jesus as your Savior right now. But I do mean that we should be much more active in actually witnessing for the purpose of having somebody pray to receive Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, it says, But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense for everyone who asks to give an account for the hope that is within you, yet with gentleness and reverence. That's the key to me. We need to be sanctified. That is, we need to be set aside, and we need to do that because Christ is in our hearts. And we need to study and meditate and be ready with some kind of a plan, whether it's four spiritual laws, wordless book, Roman road, evangelism, explosion, CWT, faith. We ought to have some kind of program in our hearts and our minds that we can give anyone a good explanation of what it means to be saved being ready, studying, meditating, and preparing our hearts, putting an outline in our Bibles, uh, putting an outline in our, in our heart and lives so that we can share with others, uh, give an account of this hope that is in us, yet with gentleness and reverence or respect. Uh, again, we don't want to hit them over the head with the Bible. We don't want to be obnoxious with our sharing where we turn them off. I, Remember an evangelism explosion uh, in other places, I've heard the phrase, don't bruise the fruit. And that's true. We can be so obnoxious with our trying to share that people will turn off the messenger before they even hear the message. And we want to be careful that we don't do that. It says in verse 16, and keep a good conscience so that in the thing in which you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ will be put to shame. Uh, I think there's a lot of truth in that. I think a lot of us uh, know that there are those that go around bashing Christians as flat world people and bashing Christians as uh, being uh, living in a different world. And uh, we just need to be sure that our life is so lived that Actually, when they try to slander us, it shames them. The people around will say, well, I may not agree with them, but you sure shouldn't be complaining about the kind of life that they're living. Uh, you sure couldn't, shouldn't be complaining about the good that they do in our world. And you should be encouraging them. Uh, as a matter of fact, verse 17 goes on and says just exactly that. It says, uh, it's better to suffer for doing right than it is for suffering for doing wrong. And that's, that's absolutely true. I mean, it would be much better to be criticized for having uh, been called a preacher, uh, standing on your soapbox in public and telling people about Christ and uh, telling people about uh, living righteous lives and going to church, having family and moral and ethical values uh, than it would be to be known as an adulterer, a thief, a robber, uh, to go around being punished for doing right uh, is far better than uh, being punished for doing wrong. And then finally in verse 18 it says, For Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Yes, Christ did die for our sins. And we need to tell people that. We need to tell them that their sins have been paid for. All they have to do is accept and believe so that we might be brought to God and that being, uh, knowing that we have become dead to sin and alive to Christ, that is that we no longer have that deep desire to sin 
uh, even though we're tempted and even though we may give in to that temptation from time to time, it's not what we really want to do. And we're alive to the Spirit of God, to the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. That's your thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.